Go with me this morning, please, to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 29. And uh, let's open up the word together and just see what God wants to say to us today. I would like to think, I would like to be able to say that every time I preach, every Sunday that I preach, I have a divine uh, revelatory word for you straight from God. I would like to say that God just always opens up the sky and just speaks to me. Uh, I wish that was the case. It's not always the case. I think any pastor would tell you that's not always the case. There's plenty of times where we get up here and and preach something out of conviction, and, and it's something that's fresh on our heart, and we just pray that God's blessing and God's anointing um, would be on it. And then there's times where I believe God just says, hey, this is, this is what I want to show you. Look at this. And I have received revelation this week, and um, God has just shown me some things in the Word that I've never seen before and never heard anyone else talk about. And... Um, I hope that it blesses you as much as it's blessed me this week. And uh, if it doesn't, just act like it does, okay? I, and I'd appreciate it. Praise the Lord. Um, Genesis 29, go with me to verse 16 for a moment. Let's read this interesting story in the 29th chapter of Genesis. Now Laban had two daughters, and the name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak. One version of the Bible says there was no sparkle in her eyes. But Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. Jacob loved Rachel. And he said, I will serve you, speaking to Laban, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. Verse 20, so Jacob served seven years for Rachel. This is where I really want to preach this morning, this next sentence. And they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. So Jacob worked, Jacob Sweat. Jacob labored every day for seven years for Rachel, but they only seemed like a few days because of the love he had for her. This morning I want to speak for a few moments about Rachel and the lamb. Rachel and the lamb. And that doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but I promise you it will as we go along this morning. I want to talk for a few minutes about this thing called love. And I want us to ask ourselves a very serious, honest question this morning. You may not jump, you may not get excited, you may not run the aisles today, but that's okay. And I want us to just be honest for a few moments. I want you to ask yourself the question this morning. Search your heart and ask yourself, how much do I really love God? Do I love God to the point that I'm willing to serve and work faithfully in his kingdom for years and years and years? And then when it's all done, it just feels like a few days because it's so awesome and I love him so much. Or is serving God and loving God a burden to you? Is it an inconvenience? Is it something you do because you feel obligated to do it? And religion and tradition say that, you ought to do it. I want us to ask ourselves the question this morning, as a church, this is for Spirit and Truth Worship Center today, are we pursuing, are we working every day, are we striving for Rachel, or are we settling for Leah? Are we working every day to get to Rachel or are we satisfied with nothing more than average, mundane, ordinary, everyday Leah? I want to say this morning that you're doing one or the other. 
I know that we like to think that there's this in-between place in God where you can actually stand still, a place where you're not moving forward, but you're not moving backwards either. There is no such place. This morning, you are either going forward in God, you are either drawing closer to Him, or you are drifting from Him, but there is no in-between. You are either the kind of person that is satisfied with less or you are wanting more. Listen, there is no in-between. There is no standing still. You're either going forward, you're moving up, or you're drifting away. You see, what I want us to understand this morning, and I pray that you would be attentive for a few minutes because I believe God wants to reveal some things to us, but Rachel represents the ultimate desire. It doesn't get any better than Rachel. She's the cream of the crop. She's the top. She's the best. Rachel represents the ultimate place of destiny. She represents the ultimate prize. Rachel represents relationship. But Leah, she represents watered down, nothingness, worthless, Meaningless religion. And I apologize in advance to my cousin Leah this morning. I'm not preaching to her. I'm preaching about the Bible, Leah, today. Rachel was beautiful. And Jacob could have easily said, hey, there's a lot of other beautiful women out there. I'll take one of them. I'm not, I'm not losing seven years of my life for Rachel. I'll take somebody else. But he said, I will not satis- I'm not satisfied. I will not settle for anything less than Rachel. I love her. She's the only one for me. She's the only one who will make me happy. And if I have to work every day and wait seven years for Rachel, I'll do it. This is what Jacob was really saying. He was saying, I'd rather live a shorter, happy life with Rachel. I'd rather live a shorter, happy, and fruitful life with Rachel than a long, boring, average, mundane life with Leah. So whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. I want Rachel. And so you're either the kind of person that says, I want more of God, and I want more of him to the point that if it costs me something, so be it. If it requires my time, if it costs me my time, so be it. If I have to change my plans, if I have to make sacrifice, whatever it takes, I will not be satisfied. I am not content. I want more of God. So it's kind of like that spirit of Elisha that you got to get a hold of this morning. The young Elisha had seen his mentor, his advisor, his counselor, Elijah. He had seen him perform miracle after miracle. He had witnessed Elijah call fire down from heaven. And he said, that's great, but I don't want the anointing you have. I want more. I want a double portion. I want twice as much. He had seen Elijah raise the dead. And he said, that's great. That's awesome. That's impressive. But I don't want your anointing. I want more. I want twice as much as much. And Rachel represents those who say, yes, I know what it's like to see souls saved. I know what it's like to witness the sinner come to an altar of repentance and God break addiction off of their life. I know what it's like to be in a revival and see an outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. I know what it's like to witness miracles, signs, and wonders. And I rejoice over that. And I give God praise for all of that. But deep down on the inside, I'm not satisfied with yesterday's anointing, with yesterday's manna. I'm going after Rachel. Rachel, I want more and more and more of him. Rachel represents those who say, God, the people of this church, Spirit and Truth Worship Center, will not be satisfied with anything less. We will not settle for anything less than a supernatural miracle for Brother Steve Marler, for Brother Kenny Martin. We must see it. We must see cancer conquered, defeated, and destroyed. Whatever it takes, God will do it. We'll pray. We'll fast. We'll seek you. We'll humble ourselves before you. God, just give us more. We want more. So you're either pursuing Rachel 
or you're settling for Leah. And when you're happy with less, when you're settling for less, when you're satisfied, when you're the kind of person that says, hey, just a little dab will do me. When you're the kind of person that you're content with Sunday morning religion. An hour and a half, two hour fix on Sunday morning is all you need from God. See, we become like a lot of people in our humanistic and self-willed society where we don't want to dump God altogether. We don't want to just completely do away with God and cause him to disappear. We just want to keep him at a comfortable distance. You stay there, God, and when I want you, I'll come to you. You stay there, and when I want to feel you, when I want to feel your presence, I'll come touch on you just a little bit. I I want you in my life. I just want to keep you at a comfortable distance. You see, the church is settling for Leah when God wants to give us Rachel. We're settling for Leah to the point that we want just enough of God to cause us to feel like a Christian. But we don't want enough of God to disturb and disrupt our comfort zone. Comfortable Christian. That's where we want to live. That's where we want to be. We want just enough of God to get us through the day and fulfill our own desires and our own ambitions. But we don't want enough of God to mess up our plans. I'll preach this piano right here this morning. We want just enough of God. I'm preaching right where we're living this morning. We want just enough of God to feel like a Christian. We want just enough of God to live a respectable, peaceful, undisturbed life, but we don't want enough of God to alter our lifestyle, to change the way we live and transform the way we live. This is why every day we're being blasted daily with every sitcom, every TV show, every movie, everything we see on TV, everything we hear on the radio, just accept Except, except, doesn't matter what the Bible says, rewrite it, rewrite it. This is why we've got Christians. I'm going to be blunt right here. This is why we got Christians going to the club and getting drunk and partying. This is why we've got Christians going to the party on Friday night and they're in youth ministry on Sunday morning. This is why we've got Christians having sex outside of marriage. This is why we have a new kind of Christian today where anything goes and everything is acceptable. It's because the church has become so religious oriented that we're relationship crippled. We're relationship destitute. We forgot. We forgot that this thing's all about relationship. Let me break your heart this morning. This thing ain't what it's not. This is not about what happens on Sunday morning. This is about what happens on Monday through Saturday. We forget the whole reason, the one reason God created man. God created you for one reason. Did you know that? To have a relationship with you. He wanted somebody to talk to. He wanted somebody to commune with. It is just as important for you to experience God on Monday morning as it is for you to experience him on Sunday morning. You see, Leah, oh, what I want us to understand is Leah represents religion, but Rachel is about relationship. Jesus did not die for you to be a part of a religious activity on Sunday. He died so that he could walk with you, so that he could talk with you, so that he could reveal his purpose and his plan for your life. He died and rose again so that he could have relationship with you. And so it's not just about what happens on Sunday morning. God wants relationship. In the Bible... Jesus over and over again compares his relationship with the church as a husband and a wife, bride and groom. He says, one day I'm going to return. I'm going to make my return to planet earth and I'm coming back to gather my bride, my wife, because I love my church. Over and over again, he compares his relationship with the church as he is the father And we are his children. Imagine if the only time you ever saw your husband, 
your wife, your children, was for an hour and a half, two hours on Sunday morning in a public place. You never got any personal time with your wife or your children. Me and my wife, Marley, we've been living with my in-laws for about eight months now, and I love my in-laws. I do, and I'm thankful for them. We're living mortgage-free, rent-free right now, and it's a blessing, and I love my in-laws. But right now, you know what? Me and Danielle and Marley cherish any time we get just the three of us. Because we don't get it a lot. And so anytime we, ha- we stay so busy, anytime we have the opportunity, just me, Danielle, and Marley, we just cherish it and we take it in because it's about relationships. It's the same way in your relationship with Jesus Christ. He says, I'm your husband. I'm your father. You are my children, and I want to spend time with you. When you need to vent and talk about somebody, I want you to talk to me. That's what Jesus says. I want you to come to me with your problems. Quit going to everybody else and telling the world about your problems. Jesus says, I'm your husband. I'm your father. I want you to come to me. Talk to me about these things. I want a relationship with you with you because I love you. Why is there such a falling away in the church? Why have so many strayed from the truth? Why is there such a breakdown in our morals, in our standards, in our convictions? Why is the church, why are we losing our young people? Why are our teenagers going off to college and going with the flow and getting hooked on drugs, hooked on pain pills, hooked on alcohol and everything else that the world has to offer, hooked on science, hooked on evolution? I'll tell you why. The church church has become so religious oriented that we are now relationship minimized. With each passing generation, it's true. The church waters it down and we settle for less. We lower the standard and we settle for less. With each passing generation, we give God less and less and less and we just settle for Leah when God wants to give us Rachel. We're in such a hurry. We stay so busy with other things that take priority over God. We want more miracles in the church. We want more anointing, more blessings, more prosperity, but we want it with less prayer. We want it with less worship, less church, less sacrifice, less faithfulness, less obedience. We've settled for Leah, and God wants to give us Rachel. When you're pursuing Rachel, when you're going after Rachel, there may come a point in your life because Rachel is about relationship that God says, hey, that TV show you're watching, that music on your cell phone, I don't like it. It doesn't please me. It doesn't draw you closer to me. It doesn't honor me. It doesn't glorify me. Turn it off. Hit the delete button on the DVR. Hit the delete button on the playlist. If you're pursuing Rachel, if you're interested in relationship, you'll say, okay, God, whatever it takes, I just want more of you. I want to be close to you. My relationship with you is more important than a sitcom on TV. I just want to be close to you. But if you're happy with Leah, If you're satisfied with Sunday religion, you'll watch whatever you want to watch. You don't care. It doesn't affect you at all. It doesn't bother you at all. You've got religion. You'll go all week and not pray. You'll go all week and not get into God's Word. And then you'll come into church on Sunday and you'll lift your hands and you'll play games. That's Leah. But Rachel is about relationship. And when you're pursuing Rachel... There may come a time in your walk where God says there's some things in your life that need to be cut off. There's some things in your life that need to be eliminated. Certain friends you have, certain relationships that aren't healthy, that aren't godly, and God says close the door. If you're pursuing Rachel, you'll say, okay, God, whatever it takes, I'll do it. But if you're satisfied, if you're satisfied with religion, take a good hard look at yourself. Because you're all you'll ever be in God. This is it. If you're satisfied with religion, you have reached the pinnacle. 
you have reached the top. There is nothing else to experience. There is nothing else that can be accomplished. Leah is as good as it gets. You know, it's interesting. If you look up the name Leah in Hebrew, in the original language of Scripture, Leah being interpreted means weary, tired, burnt out, worn out. I heard a preacher say one time that you've got two kinds of people in the church. You've got a group of people that have that old Eli spirit on them. Eli was a priest. He lived in the temple. Every single day of his life, he was in church. He was an old man, but he was tired. He was born, he was burnt out, worn out, frustrated. But then there was Samuel, who God raised up under Eli. Samuel was young. Samuel was fresh. Samuel was ready and willing. Samuel was excited. Samuel was hearing the voice of God. And you've either got that old Eli spirit on you this morning. You've got that Leah experience where you're in the church, you're working in the church, you're performing ministry, you're working for the kingdom, you sing in the choir, you play on the praise team, you run the camera, you teach Sunday school, whatever, but you're weary, you're burnt out, you're tired, you're frustrated. This is where a lot of us are. It's such a sacrifice to work for God. It's such a pain in my rear end to do anything for the church or to do anything for the kingdom. It's such a burden. That's Leah. Leah represents weariness. And you've either got that old burnout spirit of Eli, that spirit of Leah that says, I'm in church, but I hate it. I'm in church, but this really is a bother to me. Or you've got that Samuel spirit that's saying, God, here I am, speak. I want more of you. I'm hungry for more of you. I want more of your presence. Notice what the scripture said. Jacob labored every day for seven years. And when the seven years was complete, he said, seven years? I thought it was only a few days. It only felt like a few days because I love Rachel so much. In other words, this is what Jacob said. He said, it wasn't some big sacrifice. I worked every day for seven years, but it wasn't a burden to me. It wasn't a bother to me. I love Rachel so much, it only felt like a few days. I'd do it all over again if I had to. And when you really love something, we, we talk too much about sacrifice in church. If you really love something, it's not a sacrifice. If you really love something, it's not a burden. If you really love something, it's not I have to, it's I get to. I want to make an announcement this morning. I don't have to serve God. I get to serve God. I don't have to be at church this morning. I get to be at church this morning. And it's an honor. It's a joy. It's a privilege. It's not a sacrifice. I'm not here this morning because it's an obligation. I'm here because I want to be here. I'm not preaching because it's my job and I'm the pastor and you think I should preach. I'm preaching because I love to preach. It's fun. I enjoy it. I love to serve the Lord. I'm preaching because I love it. I want to serve God. I'm not just saved. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm not just saved wishing I was out there somewhere doing crazy stuff. I'm glad to be here. I'm saved and I'm glad I'm saved. The things I used to do, I don't do anymore because I don't want to do it anymore. I'm saved, and I'm glad I'm saved. The life I used to live, I don't live that way anymore. Not because I'm afraid of God. Not because I'm afraid he'll send me to hell. If I, No, I love him. I enjoy him. I want to be closer to him and his joy. It's not a burden. Come to me, Jesus says. My yoke is easy and my burden is not heavy. It's light. It's not a big sacrifice to serve God. I'm glad I'm saved. I tell you what, if you're glad you're saved, just give him a, give him a praise break this morning in this service. If it bothers you, you don't have to do it. If it's an inconvenience, I don't want to inconvenience you, but if you love him, if you're in love with Jesus, give him a great praise this morning. In 
So I said all of that to get to this. I'm where I really want to be now. It's interesting that in the Hebrew, the name Leah means weariness, tired, burnout. But in the Hebrew, the name Rachel means you. E W E. Anybody know what a you is? A you is a lamb, a female lamb. I'm not a deep preacher, but can I get deep for just a moment this morning? As crazy as this is going to sound, Rachel in the Old Testament is a female representative. She is a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. The Bible says something interesting in the New Testament. It says that John the Baptist is preaching a message to the church one day. He's preaching to the Pharisees and a bunch of self-righteous people. And as he's preaching, the Bible says in the distance, Jesus come walking up. And as John the Baptist is preaching, Scripture says he interrupted his message. He stopped preaching and he pointed at Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin. He could have called Jesus anything he wanted to, but he chose to refer to him as the Lamb. The Bible says in Revelation that the heavenly hosts, they fall down at his feet and they cry out, Worthy. Not worthy is the king. Not worthy is God. Not worthy is Alpha and Omega. Not worthy is the Savior. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. The Bible says Isaiah prophesied of Jesus and said he was led like you would lead a lamb to the slaughter. Revelation 24, 21, excuse me. John the Revelator said this of those who will enter into heaven. He said the only way you will make it to heaven is if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Jacob worked every day for seven years and it only felt like a few days. Why? Because he was so in love with the Lamb. Jacob was so obsessed with the Lamb that he worked and he slaved for seven years, and it only felt like a few days. Rachel means lamb. Rachel interpreted is the lamb. I think it's interesting that Rachel represents the lamb. And Scripture says for seven years, Jacob worked for her. The number seven represents the number of completion. Jacob represents a father. Jacob was the patriarch. He was the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read it for yourself. Seven is the number of completion. The Bible says he worked seven years for Rachel, and when the time was complete, when it was finished, when it was over, Rachel, who represents the lamb, was reunited with the father. She joined back with Jacob, who represents the father. And the Bible says in the New Testament, Jesus Christ, the lamb of God. Before he died, he told his disciples, I must leave this world. Why? Because I have to go back to my father. I've been away from him for 33 years and I must be joined back to him. And the Bible says when the work of the cross was complete, when the work of Calvary was finished, Jesus cried out, the lamb cried out his final words, it is finished. And he went back to be rejoined, the lamb and the father together. And he is forever seated at the right hand of the father. Jacob is a type and shadow of God the Father. Rachel is a type and shadow of the Lamb. And Jacob was so in love with the Lamb that he worked seven years and it only felt like a few days. How in love are you with the Lamb? 
Let's not play pretend. Let's not have pretend, church. How in love with you are the Lamb? How close are we to the Lamb? How desperate are we for the Lamb of God? There is a story in 2 Samuel chapter 12 as the musicians come. And I work on concluding this message. 2 Samuel chapter 12. This is right after David had had his affair with Bathsheba. The Bible says that God sent Nathan the prophet to David's house. And he came to David and he told David a very interesting story. He said, David, there were two men that lived in a certain city. He said, one man was rich and the other man was poor. The rich man had very many flocks and very many herds. He said, listen to the words, but the poor man had nothing, nothing at all to his name but one little ewe lamb. And then Nathan told David that this poor man, he raised this lamb in his house. He brought this lamb up in his home and the Bible says it grew up with his children. And this little ewe lamb, the Bible says, sat at the table with the family. And it ate off the table with the children and the parents. And it drank from the same cup that they drank from. And scripture says that this poor man would hold and he would cuddle the lamb in his arms. And the lamb was like a child to him. What I want you to notice about this story is this poor man did not own anything. He did not own land. He did not have money. He did not have a good job. He did not have this poor man, a college fund, saved up for his children. All the things that we say are important in this life, this poor man said, none of these things are important to me. In a lot of ways, this poor man probably felt like a failure because the Bible says the only thing he had to his name was a little ewe lamb that sat at the table, lived in his home, ate with his children. This little lamb was like family to him. Notice that the family had communion with the lamb. Notice that the family had fellowship with the lamb. The lamb was all they had. The lamb was all they lived for. Everything in their life revolved around this lamb. It's all about the lamb. I can see this poor man. I can picture him in my mind as he's traveling down the road one day and he runs into an old friend an old friend that he hadn't seen in some 20 years. And the friend asked the poor man, he says, hey, poor man, where are you living these days? And the poor man says, well, you know what? I live in a shack in the middle of nowhere. It probably wouldn't impress you any. I don't have a lot. I don't own a lot. I don't have a lot of money, but I've got the lamb. Oh, you ought to see my lamb. It's amazing. It's wonderful. This lamb lives in my house. This lamb brings such joy and peace to my family. You know what? I don't have a whole lot to my name, but I've got the lamb. I can see this poor man as someone else asks him, Hey, poor man, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm currently unemployed. I'm currently in between jobs and my family is struggling. We don't know how we're going to eat tomorrow. We don't have a lot of money, but that's okay because we've got the lamb and the lamb takes care of us and the lamb provides for us and the lamb is all we need. The lamb is enough and we really don't have anything else, but we've got the lamb. I want to tell somebody in this room this morning that you can survive without a lot of things in this life. 
You can survive without a lot of money. You can survive without a college education. You can make it in this life without a nice car or fancy jewelry or a big house or other materialistic things. You can survive without 401k and health insurance and TV and internet and music. You can survive. Some of you don't think you can, but you can survive without social media and Facebook and Pinterest and Instagram and Twitter, all those other things. But every man, every house, every family must have the Lamb of God. You cannot survive without the Lamb. And you may not be able to provide your children with nice materialistic things. You may not be able to provide them with a college fund, college education and wealth and riches, but if you can give them a relationship with the Lamb this morning, if you can give them, there is nothing greater, there is nothing better that we can offer our children, our family, than a relationship, a genuine passion and love and zeal and hunger for the Lamb of God. Somebody give God a praise in this place. It's all about the lamb. This poor man had nothing every day on TV. Prosperity preachers and churches around the world are preaching to us how important materialistic things are in this life. How important it is for you to be filthy rich and live in a nice home. And God wants all these things. But this poor man had nothing, yet he had everything because he had the lamb. What does it profit a man to gain this whole world and not have the lamb in their home and in their life? What does it profit a man to lose his soul? This thing is about more than a Leah experience. This thing is about more than Sunday morning religion. Live like you want to. Do whatever feels good. Everybody's going to heaven. That's not the gospel that Jesus taught. The gospel that Jesus taught was you have to love me with all your heart. You can't withhold. You have to love me with your mind, your strength, your soul. The gospel that Jesus taught was you must sell out. Give it all up for me. Live for me. Take up your cross and follow me. And if there's anything in this life that is more important to you than me, you're not fit for my kingdom. This is the gospel that Jesus taught. Look at how we've strayed from the truth. This is what Jesus said. He said the kingdom's not a popular place. The kingdom is not a social club that everyone who's just living an easy, breezy life is going to go to. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some striving. It's going to take, it's going to take some labor. It's going to take some people who are saying, hey, Leah won't get us to heaven. we got to go after Rachel. we got to have a relationship with the Lamb of God. Jesus says, your purpose in this life is to do what I like. Your purpose in this life is to please me. I want relationship with you. As the church stands this morning, and I close. I want to tell you a story very quickly, and I'm going to close this message, and that's, that's perfect, Janice, that's perfect. I've told this before, but I just want to bring it to our remembrance this morning. I heard this story once about this prince who was traveling into this very poor town, this poor village in India. And as he was riding in on his chariot, he had gold, silver, diamonds, all these great materialistic things. And he looked, and there was a beggar on the side of the road, and all he had was a bowl of rice. So this... This prince, this wealthy man, he comes to the beggar and he says, give me something to eat. 
The beggar looked at the prince and he thought to himself, this is a rich man. He can have anything in this life he wants. All I've got to my name is a bowl of rice. Why is he asking me for something to eat? And so he grudgingly reached down in his bowl and he got one grain of rice and he handed it to the prince. The prince reached down in his bag and he grabbed one nugget of gold and he handed it to the poor man. And he told the poor man, if you had given me the whole bowl of rice, I would have given you the whole bag of gold. I think with all my heart that what the church is seeing in these last days, we're seeing nuggets. Nuggets of God's presence. Nuggets of his power. Nuggets of of revival, nuggets of his glory, and we're not seeing the fullness of what God has or what he wants to give us because we're only willing to give but so much. But God says this morning, if you'll give me the whole bowl, I'll give you the whole bag of gold. If you'll give me all that you have, I'll give you all that I have. If you won't withhold, I won't withhold. And let me tell you something this morning. Everything that you have today doesn't compare to everything that he has this morning. And God says to Spirit and Truth Worship Center today, you don't have to settle for Leah. I want you to have Rachel. I've got bigger things for you. I've got better things for you. But you've got to be desperate for the lamb. You've got to be hungry for the lamb. How many want to draw closer to the lamb of God today? Just give him a praise. Lift your hands towards heaven. If you're in this place this morning and you want a closer walk with the lamb, why don't you just meet me around this altar for a moment in this place? Let's just seek God together before we leave this morning. Nothing in this life, nothing in this life is more important, more significant than the Lamb of God. You may not have a lot of money this morning. It's okay. You may not have the best job that the world has to offer today. It's okay. If you've got the Lamb of God, you've got all you need this morning. If you want to be closer to Him, if you're hungry for more of Him, if you don't want to settle for the mundane, for the average, if you're not satisfied with Leah, but you're pursuing Rachel this morning, would you just lift your hands toward heaven? Just begin to cry out to God in this place. Come on. With the fruit of your lips, this isn't about that person standing beside you. This is personal. This is between you and God. How much do you want Him? How in love are you with Him? Are you pursuing Him more and more every day? Or are you satisfied with less? Because you're either drawing closer to Him or you're drifting away this morning. We need the Lamb of God in this place. Come on, let's just worship him for a moment. Let's sing to him today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. The more I seek you, God. they're singing this morning every eye closed and just take a moment before we leave this place and just make it personal with God this morning the more I see you ask yourself today is there anything in my life that's taken priority over the Lamb of God search yourself this morning is there anything in my life that I've I've replaced the Lamb of God with You can survive without a lot of things, but you can't survive without the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Come on, sing it like you made it this morning. Let's lift it up. Yes, God.
grab your neighbor's hand right now and just lift it towards heaven. Come on, pray for that person beside you this morning. Speak the blessings of God. Have a burden for your brother, for your sister this morning. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. For you right now in your great name and we just ask God that when we leave here today Lord Jesus that your word would go with us God I just pray that we would make room in our lives God for your word this morning God that, that we would apply this word to our lives every day God in the name of Jesus give us a closer walk with the Lamb Lord God in the name of Jesus in Jesus holy name Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God in Jesus' name. And how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great how great is our God. Like a big heavenly choir, let's just sing it out to him together this morning. Sing how great. How great is our God. Lift it up. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. You're the name above all names, Lord Jesus. And you're the name above all names. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise. My heart will sing, my heart will sing, how great is our God. Give him a great praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> like oil upon your feet. Like wine for you to drink, like water from my heart, I'll pour my love on you. If praise is like perfume, I'll lavish mine on you until every drop is gone. I'll pour my love on you. I'm not worried about what you're doing right now. This is between me and God. And like oil upon your feet, like wine for you to drink, like water from my heart, I'll pour my love on you. If praise is like perfume, I'll lavish mine on you until every drop is gone. I'll pour my love on you. And if praise is like perfume, I'll lavish mine on you until every drop is gone. I won't withhold, Lord Jesus. I'll pour my love on you. Uh, 
holding right now. Come on, sing it to him. Hallelujah. If you won't withhold, he won't withhold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. You're so holy. You are holy, Jesus. You're holy. You're so holy. Let's call him worthy for a moment. And Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. So precious in my life, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Come on, give him the best praise. Without music, without, without anything, just give him the best praise you can give him this morning. Come on, come on, worship, worship, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive glory and power and honor and wealth and riches and praise and wisdom. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy. You are holy, you are holy, Lord Jesus. You are holy, you are holy. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Father, we'll settle for nothing less than your presence. We'll settle for nothing less than your glory, your power. We must have the Lamb. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Come on, just clap your hands to him this morning. We're almost done. We're almost done. You want Rachel or you want Leah? Come on, let's just worship him for another moment this morning. Praise God, praise God, praise God. 
This is the last time I'm going to ask you. Let's just lift up one final praise to him. Come on, give him a great praise. And so I want you to ask yourself before we close this service, can you worship him when you don't feel him? Can you worship him when you don't have the goosebumps and the music's not playing? Is your relationship strong enough with him that you can worship him when you don't feel him, but just because he's worthy and just because he's God and just because he's holy, can you give him praise? Let's see it right now. Are you pursuing Rachel or are you happy with Leah this morning? Because Rachel worshipers can worship him when it feels like he's a million miles away. It's not about how you feel, it's about he's God. It's not about how you feel, it's about he's worthy. He's the Lamb of God, he's holy, and he's worthy this morning. I don't think Jesus felt like carrying that old rugged cross. I don't think Jesus felt like 